Quote, Most atheists don't care anything about what you believe. Why so obsessed with our non-belief? It doesn't impact your life one bit. End quote. Atheism versus Christianity. The great debate continues here today on Answering Atheism, episode 107. I am your host, Christian Guy for you. I like atheists, but I really love militant atheists. Cue the intro. Oh, we don't have an intro. <laughs> Fish sticks. Oh, well. Oh, well, we're very high budget. Oh, yeah. Or very high budget. All right. Uh, why is so obsessed with non-belief? Well, I think most prominently, kind of Matthew twenty-two thirty-six through forty ordeal. Um, we are commanded to uh, love our neighbor as ourselves other people as ourselves to care about them in this selfless way probably so that multifaceted so that we don't alternatively spend our time uh, selfishly which we're of course all fallible to do so but here we have a uh, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like, this, like, like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Boy, oh boy. If only everybody kept those suckers. My goodness. That's quite steep to to achieve. But um, so that's why we are obsessed. That's why we are we care. Eternal life that God offers as a free gift hangs in the balance and we care we care we want that for you we want that for you once someone has it you want that for other people He says, uh, most atheists, most, yeah, the, the more casual probably, not the militant ones. The militant ones are fun. Most atheists don't care about anything about what you believe. Huh. Well, um, I, I think they should care. I think they should care just like the vice versa so that we know so that we know what we believe or other worldview type folks believe so that we know the positions and we can um, talk them through um, knowing what a different worldview holds to I think is important if for instance, let's say, uh, just for a wacky example, let's say Christians believed to get rid of non-believers. That's not our position, but let's say that was. Should this guy be saying that atheists don't care about what Christians believe? He should care. He should care. He should want to know. That would be very important. And there is such a group of 
folks out there a worldview a belief system that believes in doing away with non-believers so it's very very important to care what other groups believe it's very important why so obsessed with our non-belief i went through that it doesn't impact your life one bit I think your uh, I think you're downplaying your uh, atheism. It sounds like he's downplaying his atheism to justify it in a sense. That's what it s seems like to me. It doesn't matter what I believe. You just you just you just focus on elsewhere you focus on you i i disagree with him in a broader scale sense you know it might not directly directly impact me but there's different things called the butterfly effect the ripple effect you throw a stone in water that one thing and then it ripples out bigger and bigger and then the butterfly effect is just infinite one one change leading to a bunch of different changes so there can be that throughout time just based upon one thing so for instance if we say just one abortion think about all the ripple effects throughout time that person could have had you know and all the possibilities maybe they were supposed to be with someone and have children of their own and yet they got murdered and i'm i'm just talking about one and them having, you know, their possible future of being with, you know, a future spouse, mate, and having kids of their own, and those kids being a blessing unto other people and so forth. That's just one example on one topic that could affect people's lives not that all atheists agree with abortion but generally to justify it generally among other things so what I would hold to is is that the individual it is important what the individual believes because the individual individuals make up you know more of the pie essentially uh, the whole country so it's important what we believe it was important what the founders believed for Pete's sake could you imagine if they believed different things and acted differently, took different actions. But <clears throat> what I'd hold to, <clears throat> excuse me, I eat and then there's some noises of it going down, sorry. <clears throat> I would hold to The individual has this ripple effect. The individual can affect friends and family locally and so forth. So atheist or whatever different viewpoint does affect things. It does ultimately affect things.
So the individual affects, you know, the neighborhood, the town, all, everyone as a whole, and so forth. City, um, uh, county, state, country. So, so I disagree with him, quite simply. And out of Fourth uh, of July type stuff recent, let's talk for a second about rights. Where do the rights come from? Where do the rights come from? And is it important that, is it the case that this atheist doesn't impact me? Rights. What did the founders believe? What if we had a country you know, 99% Christian versus a country 99% atheist or something like that. Compare the two. Compare the two. One group believing in God-given inalienable rights one group lacks belief in God and thus the grantor of rights and thus no basis to fight for those rights and defend those rights. It makes all the difference in the world. Imagine if the Founding Fathers held to differently. Imagine if they held to differently. We wouldn't have what we have today. And the country is changing. Changing, changing, changing. People are now wanting post-birth abortion and thinking it's fine. Murdering children up to several years old or any age thinking it's fine so when this guy says it doesn't impact your life one bit I think it matters to a world of people what different folks believe so that's all I want to say we got to around 15 minutes again. We're getting there. So close enough. Um, I want to end this off. I went way longer than I thought it would. I thought it'd only be five minutes and we'd, we'd have it. We'd have it, gold. But no. So God offers you eternal life as a free gift. What mankind lost, God repaired the bridge and wants to give it back to you. What you have to do is ask for forgiveness, accept Jesus as Savior, and trust the Savior. Trust Him, His work on the cross, to save you. Not your goodness, not your lack of doing bad temporarily, because <laughs> it's going to be temporary. Um, nobody can keep the commandments like like Jesus did so God in the flesh second person of the Trinity so and then we can uh, end off with a quote here I've noticed that the people for abortions have already been born Ronald Reagan nice nice statement Ronald not that I 
probably agree with him on everything. But uh, anyhow, that's that. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for more. I'll see you ahead for 108. Take care, cool.